I have spent about 48 years in this profession. Uh, I had ups and downs. It's a journey. So you sometimes you achieve milestones effortlessly. Sometimes there are challenges, there are headwinds. Sometimes there are tailwinds. After completing 48 years, if I just reflect and introspect, I said I had a very satisfying journey. I think I do not uh, measure this journey based on my successes and outcomes. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm very much satisfied. In my own way, to put it, is a Maslow theory of hierarchy of needs, self actualization what I wanted, I achieved it. To that extent, I'm extremely happy. But you know, more than the success or failures, because which are basically the outcomes, the experiences I had have been uh, very vast and varied because it's not confined to one location, one function, but you know, being in the general management for so many years, different locations, different countries, different states, which is be very satisfying personally for me to sum it up, very self-fulfilling. I would go here one step further. I'm 70 years old. So I would say firstly, who strikes you most, who shaped your personality or a character. Uh, I would say, of course, I acknowledge my parents, but um, more so my father. My father has been my role model. Later at different phases of life, different people have helped me. There are certain people who are role models to me, who are the mentors, advisors, counselors, or guides. He demonstrated to me, taught me, what is this art of tough love. He means tough on issues, but soft on people. At DCM, when I started way back in late 71, Dr. Charathram, with whom I had the fortune of being worked with him very closely, he was a visionary. I think he taught me a couple of things, like what is inspirational leadership. And you know, I think he used to call by names, even though he, he was the managing director for a huge organization. He given me some sort of strokes, positive strokes, which will, will be different folks need different strokes. I think, you know, he is very good at it in dealing with those sort of people. Though I was very young and a management trainee, he was the chairman of the company. But the way he addressed and he dealt with me was inspirational. He gave me one assignment. He said, Dwarka, you have done very well in this. Now I am sending you to Lucknow. This is a challenging assignment, but I'm sure you'll come back with flying colors. He said, your luck starts now. Uh, so when I came back after that, he was very happy. There was a gentleman who was with him at that time, the executive director. He said, Dr. Chatram, I would like to retain Dwarka Prasad with me for one more year. He said, his name is not Dwarka Prasad, it's Dwarka Nath. So I'm saying that is the level of that uh, involvement of a person of his stature getting into. So one thing I learned there is that, you know, to inspire a motivate person, one need not be everything by terms of promotions, compensations, and then there are other hygiene factors which can also help you to motivate and bring it, which is according to me, what is the, called a psychic income. He taught me so if to become a great leader. It is not that you need to be always clinical and deliver performance, which is important, but you need to also inspire and motivate your team members to deliver the best. This is more a Pygmalion effect in management, you know. Focus on younger generation to sharpen their skills and develop their personality, be it at the business schools, be it in, even at the graduation level, or career counseling and you know teaching or mentoring. Uh, and secondly, actively involved in some of the professional bodies, be it IMA, be it CII, be it NHRD. I started learning from my mentees, there is a reverse mentoring for the last 25 years. When you are not worried about the A squared syndrome, that is age and authority, you can learn a lot. You may be younger to me, you may be younger to equal to my son 
otherwise sitting here 70 years i can't interact professionally with a young lady of, or a young boy of 25 26 he said you are a, my grandfather's era you need to be relevant to the context if you want to really as a retired person or a senior person want to import anything nobody is going to listen to your wisdom merely because you have experience it nothing to do with age and the authority it is more to uh, you are more than the positional authority it is the personal credibility This is a very interesting thing, a anecdote I have to say. I used to have three generations virtually reporting to me. There was an army colonel, used to call me always sir. Okay, I couldn't change him. There are one generation who have worked with me for many years. When I was grown up in this organization, they call me sir. And there is another generation who used to call me later who called me by initials. I was called affectionately known as PDN, P. Dwarkana. And you know, there was, so they were, so there is sir, there is PDN, younger generation called Dwarka. So, you know, there was three generations when we look at the team, their subordinates call me Dwarka, the, the bosses call me the <laughs> bus, sir, or formal. So, I think, you see, you have to live when you're going through these sort of evolutions, you need to go through this. Yeah. I think it's important for the person who is it. And when we try to address somebody f by first name, though they called us to do it, my bosses, they, they never liked it. They used to perhaps hate in office. How dare you call me Dwarka? What do you know? Your age is not equal to my experience. That's where A squared syndrome comes in. So you have no answer. Right? And secondly, one last message to it, it very easy to challenge and question somebody. Because you are given that authority, you should not misuse it. You understand, it's not for class participation or try to score one up. See, I was a challenging question. But if you ask a relevant question, you should encourage people to do it. Then they will be also very, you know, receptive. This is where if you say, oh, this man is old generation, he's too bureaucratic, then, you know, you are lost. Just to give you an instance, I think, you know, if I got any uh, engagement at that time to go to movie on a working day after the office hours, uh, if my boss said uh, we had to work today, I could have never said, sorry, I will not work. I think, you know, nowadays, I mean, later, I've realized you need to accept when some people complain, see, this boy or girl doesn't want to stay back. He said he has got a, 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 a date yeah. with his boy or girlfriend. I mean, you said, I said, you just relax. <laughs> I think, have you told him my nod was her? So this is the reality of life in which you live. I mean, unless somebody is doing it just f fooling, I think you need to accept it. So basically, if you, you can handle different gender, but you have to change your mindset. And different like we play cricket. How do you play test cricket versus one day cricket or T20 or IPL? Techniques, basic rules are same is marring some modifications yeah. but the techniques have to change depending on the bowler or the pitch or the field setting so that's what it is if you can adopt a leader is one who can cope up with change i think if you can cope up with change you can do it that makes a difference between a good leader and a great leader as well i do foresee the, the employee relations problems may stem in the case of service oriented industries on white collar which is, you see when things are not honky dory people will tend to become a sort of associations trade unions and all that because they said they are vulnerable otherwise then the resistance will so when you are dealing in old days is more blue collar manufacturing oriented trade union based but nowadays it could be you know you see in a few sectors like finance, banking or or civil aviation it happens but I, I i hope it may not happen in other sectors like healthcare and um, you know entertainment industry media and other it it yes 
because it starts when you feel that you know you, you are threatened or you perceived as threatened so the, then you don't know how to handle these scenarios because you never had experience you feel that hr means is more to do with talent and leadership and reward rather than to do with the with the whole facet of people management yeah. which is not only for hr but any people's guy any function leaders i will say the hr should not be confined qualified hr but is something who deals with the people i think you know employee relations uh, what today what those days was very different i think you know what he has alluded especially some belts are very hot and uh, is mostly to do with the environment which they were operating because uh, if you see calcutta and west bengal it started because the change in the governments the approaches and the philosophy has changed they were very um, a very uh, volatile said so some of the union leaders have uh, got a philosophy they are very intelligent you can learn from and not but the you know the approaches were different and the, most of the people labor were not very knowledgeable or literate and uh, you know they were carried away influenced by some political affiliations or so the politics uh, and coupled with other things have helped but later you see in the late 80s if you see after the textile mill fail failure where intimidation and threats uh, things have changed a lot and uh, and the governments are also started to becoming more progressive and judicial rulings of in 70s 80s were a little bit different from 90s by the time uh, the the whole philosophy has changed and so in age is only a number and you know it's ultimately it is a relevant number i'm not saying but ultimately you said are you able to adopt sometimes you need to go to that level sometimes they have to come to them so ultimately whether you want to become a ceo you want to become a leader you do you have the bandwidth to deal from mali to malik i think you know hr and leadership is to deal with different kinds of people not only with the people who have a similar background i am an mba you are an mba i can deal you bitch batch doesn't matter you 20 years but we are all from same institute or different institutes that you should be you are able to handle the gateman or the gardener up to the chairman of the company do you have the bandwidth then you, whether you are hr professionally or by by qualifications or by by practice or any functional head will then will become a ceo or the chairman or anything is uh, is only an outcome